Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a new camera from Cadex. It is the Baby Retail. You may be familiar with the Stalker Micro Retail. Uh, this has basically got the same sensor in it, but it's nano sized. Stock with the connectors, it weighs four and a half grams. And as you would expect, it's 14 by 14. From the lens to the back, it's 19 and a half millimeters. It also comes with a 19 millimeter adapter for mounting, a control board to change your camera settings when it's connected like that and powered on, an Allen key or hex tool, some different mounting screws, and of course a lens cap. Start out back because the sun is nice and low <laughs> this time of year. And we do our customary light handling test where I take the cloth and I touch it to the lens and I remove the cloth to see how quickly it adjusts to the sun. I also do some various distances with the cloth to block the sun. And for those that aren't familiar, because I know there's a lot of new people that have come to the channel, uh, as a pilot, we're always concerned about flying blind. So if you fly in and out of shadows or if it goes dark on you, um, so we want these cameras to react pretty quickly so we're not flying blind when we do uh, have those situations coming in and out of shadows. Uh, because this tree is lined up so nicely, another decent or real world test would be this little jog over here to where I just kind of stick my head out around the tree to see what the light looks like. Uh, and it handles pretty well. You also get a little bit of what the uh, surroundings back here look like. Uh, like I said, it's win winter time, so we don't have much greenery. We the grass is all gray, but let's head out to the front and go for our test flight. Here we go. We're going to take off and just kind of cruise around the front of the uh, neighborhood here. It's middle of the day and uh, most of my neighbors should be off at work so everybody's safe and out of harm's way. But you will note I fly fairly cautiously to make sure I'm not bothering anyone. We do have one of the things I like to look at and I think it's just because I'm sensitive to it is the red. The red in a lot of different cameras will really kind of bloom or blossom. Uh, not necessarily in a good thing but it'll look off because I am familiar with the actual color of these cars in the neighborhood. Sometimes red is one of those things that I'm drawn to. Uh, but other than that, I don't think I'm terribly sensitive to color and some of the feature sets. So in large part, when you're watching this video flying around, you're just going to have to look at it and judge for yourself. What do you think of the sky? What do you think of the sharpness, the brightness? Uh, I do fly over to the neighbor's garage. You get a little picture of the you get the image of their garage so you get some straight lines in view you can tell if there's any distortion or fisheye uh, there's also the shingles on their house when we do that shot and i'll, I'll call it out when we get there um, but at the moment i'm just kind of flying in and out of shadows where i can of course without leaves and without the sun real high it's not a great test but it gives us a sample of what flying with it at least this time of year uh, in north america would be like and here's a red car, and to me the reds and the colors appear pretty natural in this camera. I didn't find a color that was off or extra bright or any sort of uh, oddity with the colors. I thought they all looked pretty natural. The sky might be a touch of a tint bluer than it really is, but that's it's close there. I think you know many of you could probably uh, tell me a little bit more about what you think of that natural sky color, whether... Uh, I think when you get the light in view, it's a little bit more natural than when you're not facing the sun. I think it's a little bit more blue. This is that shot of the garage. Uh, this is one of the things that I'm told repeatedly by uh, people who comment on camera review videos is really important to them. This gives us the opportunity to look at distortion. Uh, for the fisheye or any sort of warping that might be going on in the view. I should mention that I have this connected to a run cam onboard recording. That's why you don't see any OSD elements. That's why you don't see any VTX breakup. It's because I'm recording this straight from the camera to that board on a micro SD card. And that's pretty customary. That's the best way I can represent what the camera looks like in the go goggles. It's not perfect but it's about as close as I can get. Uh, at least it doesn't have the typical VTX transmission, but on the other hand, VTX transmission is part of where we're at for the most part when it comes to flying. I'm gonna cruise around just a little bit more. I don't think we need to see a whole lot more of this flight footage. I do have a section of flight footage that I'll show next that is nighttime. Now it's noted that this is a starlight camera, but I was a little bit surprised the black and white footage does not look as good as the color footage is. This is what I mentioned with the starlight and the black and white footage, that you get some actual ghosting. Uh, when I look at this tree over here, notice that when I get the tree kind of in the, in the picture and then I move it, the tree image slightly kind of smears with 
the movement. Um, that was something that caught my eye in the goggles. It might be a little bit hard to pick up when you're if you're watching it in, say, a bright room or something of that nature. Here I'm just jumping into the settings uh, to show you what I have things set to. And we'll go through all the settings. I think that's something that kind of needs to be improved when it comes to being able to view the settings is the blue highlight with a black text is really difficult to see. You can actually see it best with a light color in the background. And when I show you those settings, unfortunately, uh, it's going to take some of a study if if you want to see anything essentially it's got the camera settings you would expect to see in the camera and i'm just kind of doing some testing here with changing the different modes that we've got uh, on the camera and seeing what it looks like at night because it is supposed to be a starlight camera maybe i just don't understand in color it looks better to me than it does in black and white but i thought black and white was the preferred method for people who were flying at night uh, but in this particular case it looks to me like color does better than black and white, and auto definitely doesn't do nearly as well as color does when it comes to uh, the the dark, at least in my opinion. We don't have street lights in our neighborhood, so that's something that uh, should be noted, that it is probably darker than you think it might be. Even with the Christmas lights, our street gets really, really dark, especially this section that I pointed over to on our left most. That's really dark area over there. Uh, I have that one light off of the, the edge of the garage over there. Other than that, you've got around kind of the corner or the bend is a few house lights, but those house lights are fairly far away. But the Christmas lights across the street, uh, that's my neighbor across the cul-de-sac. Uh, you might know that distance, but we're, we're a fair bit from them even as well. This is where I walk through all the settings, and I go through these fairly quickly. You can always slow the video down uh, using the gear icon that YouTube provides to slow down playback. Uh, and you can study these if you'd like, if it's something that you want to see each and every one. Unfortunately, because it is black text when you highlight it with the blue, it is difficult to see. That was something I passed on to Caddx that I thought they should change. That if they're going to change the text color when they move the highlight, that it should be something we can still see, like yellow or a bright red or something of that nature, but changing the text to a dark color with a blue highlight, it just doesn't work very well. Maybe they can reverse that and it would work better, but you do still get the opportunity to see the different settings as I run through them here. There are quite a few settings to change, and if you are into photography and lenses and all the things that make up image processing, you probably have a pretty good idea of what sort of settings you're looking for and what capabilities you're looking for. I, on the other hand, generally just fly cameras in their stock settings. I might make a sharpness or contrast change, but I don't dig in real deep into these things because I just find it funner to fly than I do to change all the camera settings. And as I've mentioned a few times, I'm not all that sensitive. And we continue to go through the settings one by one. I actually go a little bit slower than I did last time, so this is taking a bit longer than I expected to. I thought I'd be through it already by the time I got done uh, with my little bit of narration there. I have a little bit of troubles fumbling around with a little control stick. Sometimes I press uh, down on the pad rather than vertically down to make it go to the next selection and you end up inside a menu that you don't want to end up inside. Uh, but that's kind of the nature of all these control boards. I have yet to find one that works exceedingly well. But as we make our way through the end, we come back to the desk and we have our final thoughts. The final thoughts will really have to come down to what you've seen so far with the video performance, the image, the clarity, and the price point. And the price point, as I see it here on Race Day Quads, of course, price points can vary. I'll put some links down below to where you can pick up a camera or you can go look at different price points. Otherwise, just go to your favorite uh, web shop and search for Caddx Baby Rattel, R-A-T-E-L, and it should pull up this camera. I do believe it only comes in this yellow color, but the price point is $30.99. So it's a premium camera, and so we should expect premium performance. And what do you think? Is it as good as the original Rattel? Is it better than the original Rattel? Does micro-sizing it make it more valuable? Or not? If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in that section down below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.